95% of our global food production depends on soil. The way we grow our crops are changing. Because the technology is changing, the way we should think about way forward, how do we better manage, how do we better utilize our soil so that we can actually feed our growing population. Soil mapping is connecting the field information with different kind of covariates or the environmental information to generate uh, maps which is more readable to the end users. Traditionally, soil maps are developed by soil surveyors. It relies really on the expert judgment. And if you have two experts, you might not just get the same results. I'm Steve Sickle. I've been here in St. George all my life. Soil maps of the past were pretty archaic. This whole farm would probably have two or three soil types. Whereas now, once I've done soil optics on this farm, I see lots of different soil types and variability in, within that soil type as well. In the step one, we collect Edgemont background information. It could be in the form of a satellite data, previous soil map, any sort of information we can collect. Second step, we take our different sort of sensor, we go out in the field, shoot an electromagnetic pulse to record them based on the amount of moisture container, based on the soil texture, some portion comes back, some portion dissipates in the soil. Third step, we collect some of the soil samples. We bring back to the lab, analyze them, and developing a predictive relationship between those particular point soil samples with the environmental covariate data. With a very few points, maybe 10 or 20 or 30 points, when you collect soil samples, we develop this relationship. Now we can actually expand that relationship for the whole area. This is step four, where we develop the soil map. For the last step, we bring them all together, use a statistical model to develop a strategy. So that means where should we go or how much of a fertilizer we should add or what depth of a seed we should put or what density of the seed we should, we should put it there. Digital soil mapping is part of the spatial farming that we're in now and that we're treating each quarter acre differently than the quarter acre next to it. Better mapping and better measurement or better information we develop through digital soil mapping could help us optimize use of our natural resources or crop inputs. So we're not only reducing our cost involved to it, but we are developing a major impact on our environment. I think it's pretty easy to do a commitment. It, it just takes a phone call to get it done. You've got to get over that hurdle of the $25 or $30 an acre charge or whatever that number is that you're gonna get that investment back really quick and that you're gonna be putting nutrients where you need it, not over applying and not under applying. The digital maps help us complementing the four R's that we call the nutrient stewardship. I figure I paid back that investment on the first year. If I get an extra bushel off a three year rotation of one bushel of corn, one bushel of beans, one bushel of wheat, that's paid for. So in my lab, my research group is contributing to develop or create that different kind of technology, different kind of algorithm, different kind of methodology. We can collect soil data much easily, much faster, more accurate in less time and more cheaply. We are developing a different sensors, which could be very handheld for a small scale application, or you can put a multiple of those sensors into a tractor as it is moving forward and collecting data in real time. Knowledge from a computer science, knowledge from a data science could be a very, very critical in moving ahead with a data-driven data agriculture.